Today on Investigate TV Plus, federal drug agents search innocent people boarding flights across the nation. I'm Lee Zurich. And I'm Tisha Powell. We investigate why money is taken from passengers even when no arrests are made and no drugs are found. Plus... Yeah, that's a sugar daddy. That's a sugar mama. I'll look at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, block that person right away. That's a creeper. That's disgusting. Online predators attempt to extort teens with the promise of easy cash. We go in depth with the cybercrime fighters working to protect your children. Then a father inspired to start a journey of healing. My son passed away from cancer in 2009 and I picked up running shortly after that. You'll see how he's spelling out hope for cancer patients and their families one run at a time in-depth stories that inform and inspire. You're watching Investigate TV Plus. Accusations of profiling and thousands of dollars seized from travelers at the world's largest airport. There are no laws against carrying any amount of money on a domestic flight, but some airline passengers have been randomly searched and even had money taken by federal drug agents without being placed under arrest or charged with a crime. It's called civil asset forfeiture, and according to the ACLU, it allows law enforcement officers to seize and keep any property they allege is involved in a crime. Investigator Brendan Keefe exposes how these warrantless searches work in Atlanta and why it's so difficult to get the money back. Hiding in plain sight at the busiest airport in the world. Drug agents walk the concourses blending in by dressing just like passengers. This is a DEA task force officer scanning passengers boarding a flight for Los Angeles. There's another. How do we know who they are? Because we use the same tactics to investigate them. After several passengers said they were targeted for warrantless searches at the gate or on the jet bridge. I'm a random search guy. So he says, so those white folks, and I'm the random search. Hollywood actor Jean Ellie was stopped by Clayton County officers while boarding a flight to LA. Were you here in Atlanta? Yep. How long were you here? Doesn't matter. Why are you asking me all these questions? Check my bag, do what you gotta do with him so I can get out of here, please. The narcotics officers didn't find anything but kept asking questions of the Emmy winning actor. When you purchase your ticket? Don't worry about it, man. Just put the call. Check my bag so I get out of here, please. I just back here. Thank you. That whole thing is just so humiliating. Like, who thinks this is a, a, a proper way to treat anyone? Tabari Sturdivant is an Atlanta-based film director who was also flying to L.A. when agents stopped him at the departure gate. All my life, I pride myself on being an upstanding citizen and you still do this to me. I'm clean, like I'll comply, but like, why, why me? Drug agents search Tabari's bags in the boarding area in front of other passengers, some recording on their phones. I'm thinking more about, you know, making this plain than I'm even thinking about my rights at this point. Is that part of their strategy, you think? I think it's 100%. Records show the DEA and local police rarely find any drugs or make arrests during what they call cold consent searches at the gate. I see the finish line to get on the plane. Everybody knows that feeling of getting, uh, you know, right at the door or getting on the jetway when you get blindsided. I'm like, man, I got to get on this flight. And they were like, if you let us do our job, we'll get, I'll make sure you get on your flight. So I'm like, oh, do what you got to do they didn't find anything suspicious in Tabari's bag. So what were they looking for? He just is like, are you high? Are you, have you smoked? Do you have any drugs in this bag? Do you have any money? The DEA and other drug agents are seizing millions of dollars from departing passengers at Hartsfield Jackson, mostly from flights to LA, even though it's completely legal to travel domestically with any amount of cash. We found dozens of cases in Atlanta's federal court, USA v. some amount of currency. That's right, in most cases, they don't arrest the passenger. They arrest their money, even when no drugs are found. The probable cause statements show that the cash is administratively forfeited as drug money if the passenger can't prove on the spot that their money is innocent. You're either going to sign a consent form saying that you're allowing us to search them, okay. or I'm going to detain them 
run my dog on it and get a search warrant. Feel free to search the bag, sir. Are you willing to sign a consent form? Yes, I will sign a consent form. Feel free to search my bags. In this 2015 Department of Justice report, the Office of Inspector General told the DEA it should stop using a troubling technique, causing passengers to believe a voluntary search is a mandatory TSA secondary inspection. Eight years later, we found DEA agents at Atlanta's airport using similar methods. We were different in TSA, man. People just like give us a little more hard time than they do TSA. He disapproached me and he asked me for my ID. He didn't state who he was. He just asked me for ID. And I thought he was a, a Delta agent. He had airport credentials on. And so I, I gave it to him immediately. I thought this was how I was gonna get on the plane or something. I don't know. The drug agents may be in plain clothes, but they're not undercover. This is Sergeant David Fikes. He and his canine Bane are still all over the Brookhaven Police Facebook page. Since Fikes was assigned to the DEA task force at the airport last year, records show he's been involved in seizing more than a million dollars in cash. His police department has received a 9% cut of that money, more than $100,000, even though Brookhaven PD is nowhere near the airport. If we have the ability to walk up to, say, Officer Fikes or to any one of these agents in the airport, what would you like us to ask them? How would you feel if somebody did this to you? How would you feel? We found Fikes and other plainclothes DEA task force officers by going to departure gates for LA flights. They stopped passengers at the boarding door, asking to see their documents before going through their carry-on bags. The searches we watched came up empty. The drug agents cased three different gates in Concourse A, blending in with passengers while we observed from a standoff distance. But it didn't take long before the task force officers spotted our phone and camera. Once they sat down, it was time for a cold consent interview of our own. Hey there, I'm with the news. You're Sergeant Fikes, aren't you? I'm with uh, Atlanta News First. Okay. How many innocent people do you have to search before you find what you're looking for? Sir, I've got nothing to say to you. Another officer was behind me, out of sight, over my shoulder, giving hand signals to Fikes as I asked him questions. What about Sabari Sturdivant? Do you remember him? No? Took everything out your bag and put it all around in front of everybody and made you look like a criminal. Like, how would you feel? Officer Fikes. Why do people have to prove themselves innocent? You got nothing to say to these people? In March 2017, the U.S. Justice Department's Office of the Inspector General reported that over the last decade, the DEA returned confiscated money just 8% of the time. The DOJ says part of the reason more money isn't returned might be not everyone tries to get the money back. The website AirSafe recommends that you avoid traveling with large amounts of cash, especially when flying. If you need to carry a large sum of money, AirSafe suggests you keep cash in a carry-on and out of public view. If your carry-on bag is searched by the TSA or law enforcement, insist on keeping it in sight. Be sure to tell the truth if you're asked about the amount of money in your bag. And if you do need to carry a large amount of cash during a trip, AirSafe recommends using a debit card to withdraw cash from an ATM or wire yourself money. There's billions of dollars in unclaimed property and some of it might be yours. Still to come, we show you how to be your own investigator so you can cash in. But first, a new social media scam attempts to lure teens with the promise of easy cash plus online extortion. How many calls I've gotten from people that I know personally whose kids got involved and they are panicked because they are being extorted. We take you inside the police work that's catching these predators. You can watch Investigate TV Plus anytime streaming online. Get the app for Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. They're free to download. A new scam targeting teenagers on social media may look like a sweet deal, but it can quickly turn sour. Scammers are reaching out to teens, asking them to be their sugar daddy or sugar mama. Here's how it works. The scammer will tell the teen they just need to send a good morning or good night message and pay attention to them. In exchange, the scammer will pay them hundreds or even thousands of dollars. The scammer will then ask the teen to return a portion of the money or send it to the scammer's child. Once the teen sends the money, the scammer will gain access to their bank account 
and empty it out. Reporter David Custer sits down with a Michigan mom whose daughter received dozens of offers and examine a new tool cyber investigators are using in an attempt to box out these social media predators. He didn't message you though, did he? No. He just like sent him. Scrolling through social media, a routine ritual for most 14 year olds. I like to see what people post and like about their lives and just like what they're doing. So he claims to be a model and like how you can just post like fun videos and dances. The pictures these girls post, especially the girls, you know, it's sometimes it looks a little provocative or too sexy maybe for their age. Their age is what makes a young teenager like Kimberly Gray's daughter Asia a prime target for a social media sugar daddy. Where do they come from and how are you contacting my child? Oh, I think this is a sugar mama. Asia has more than a hundred messages from both men and women all asking the same thing, for her to be their sugar baby, promising large sums of money for very little in return. They'll say that they just want like a conversation and they don't want anything like inappropriate from you or they like are not going to do anything to harm you. Some offer like a thousand a week or twice a week, some offer like 500. For children who maybe, be in, maybe are in a circumstance where they don't have financial means, that's a real good trick. This that's is your blocked list. Yeah, that's a sugar daddy. That's a sugar mama. And I'll look at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, block that person right away. That's a creeper. That's disgusting. How many calls that I've gotten from people that I know personally whose kids got involved and they are panicked because they are being extorted. Genesee County, Michigan Sheriff Chris Swanson says the FBI's Detroit office recently warned of an increase in sextortion schemes targeting young boys. It begins when an adult contacts a teenager, usually between 13 and 17 years old, through social media. They'll use techniques and manipulation over time to earn their trust, eventually convincing the teen to send nude pictures or videos. Once they do, the predator will then attempt to extort them for money, threatening to share the images with the teen's family or post them online if they don't pay up. This X right here indicates something that was um, deleted. Captain Carrie Ann Nelson is extensively trained in mobile forensics examination. Everything in the red is stuff that's been recovered that was deleted. Captain Nelson uses the newest technology and software to extract information about a sextorter from a victim's phone. She says it's often a race against the clock because criminals will try and remotely wipe a victim's phone. She's even had to use this armored box to block signals. It's equipped with a light so that we can see what we're doing. Transmitting to and from a phone while she does her detective work. And then just do the extraction this way. I have a daughter who's 14, so to see kids that are three, four, five years old, you know, especially little girls like my daughter. Um, that's hard to deal with. The status so of let's the go phone back was to that. Let's go back. To and with all the tools in law enforcement's arsenal, they believe the best defense isn't an armored box or the latest software. It's a parent starting a dialogue with their child. How many do you think you have on here? <laughs> Probably like a hundred. I know my children are not perfect and I don't expect them to be perfect yeah. either. Knows I'm being honest and she can trust me and like I can come to her if I need help or if I feel uncomfortable in like certain situations. I hope that parents can make their children feel comfortable enough to come to them so they don't fall victim to this ever. I think that's super important. To report suspected sextortion, call the nearest FBI field office or 1-800-CALL-FBI, or you can make a report online with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children by visiting report.cybertip.org. I certainly never thought in a million years that this could happen to me. My family certainly never did. Our team took an in-depth look at sextortion and how it's impacting our youth. You can watch the full reports on our website, investigatetv.com. Just search sextortion. Still to come, drawing from experience. I just hope that they come away with the fact that um, there are people out there that actually care about them. How an app and his running shoes inspired a father to etch out a memory for young cancer patients and their families. But first, billions of dollars in unclaimed cash waiting for its owners across the country. We show you how to be your own investigator to find out how much you could be owed. Our in-depth coverage continues. You can get connected to Investigate TV Plus on all social media platforms.
A slice of $20 billion is waiting for you, and you may not even know it. According to the National Association of Unclaimed Property Administrators, one in seven Americans has unclaimed property. Even if you've looked in the past and didn't find anything, the association suggests checking for annual updates because you might be surprised by what you'll find. In this Be Your Own Investigator, Josie Sturman gives you the resources to search for and find lost treasure. Could you have money out there that you don't even know about? There are lots of reasons you may have lost your money, but in this Be Your Own Investigator, we'll show you how to find cash you may have forgotten about. First is a little thing called unclaimed property. Each state treasurer's office keeps a record of unclaimed property. It could be anything from cash you may have left in a bank account or the contents of a safety deposit box. Just Google your state treasurer and the words unclaimed property. For example, in Missouri, the state says it has more than $1 billion in unclaimed assets, and one in 10 people has unclaimed property, with an average of 300 bucks just sitting there waiting for them. By the way, in addition to money, state treasurers also keep unclaimed military medals and honors. So you might also find a priceless family heirloom by looking through your state's site. Another place you might have lost your own money, retirement plans. Lots of people change jobs and forget to move their retirement money from their 401k. The easiest way to track it down is to contact your previous employer or benefit manager. But what if you don't know who to call anymore? You can check out what's called a 5500. That's a document companies file with the federal government that's all about their 401k plans. You can look yours up using the Department of Labor's website. It's called eFast. It'll have the plan administrator and a phone number right there on the first page. There are a bunch of other ways you might have money hiding somewhere, from someone who owes you in a bankruptcy to a bond, maybe a mortgage insurance refund. The Bureau of Fiscal Service is a one-stop shop to find out. Just look up unclaimed assets, treasury. Bottom line, the magical phrase for all of this is unclaimed assets, and make sure you're looking at a page that ends in .gov. Happy hunting, and let me know if you see anything in my name. I'm Josie Sturman with this Be Your Own Investigator. So I've done this before. I've searched for unclaimed property. I actually found something in my oh. name. But it was like $4.20. It wasn't much. Was it worth looking for the $4.20? I mean, it was kind of, was... yeah, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It was a little, yes, it was worth yeah. it. I got $4 in and felt like, hey, it's my money. Yeah, $4 I got it. more than you had. Exactly. Well, up next, running for a reason. If I'm out doing a name, I'm usually thinking about their story. What started as a way to honor the memory of his son is weaving its way into the story of cancer survivors, fighters, and their families. You can watch Investigate TV Plus anytime online. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel at Investigate TV. You can catch stories and full episodes. A father who lost his young son to cancer etches hope for cancer patients and survivors all around the world. Rick Zortman is known as the human Etch-a-Sketch. Rick uses an app on his phone to etch the names of cancer patients and survivors during his runs. Reporter Sam Bowman caught up with Rick on a run in Savannah, Georgia to find out how he makes these names take shape. Many people have a reason for why they run from getting in shape to simply getting outside. But for Rick Zortman, his affinity with running started with tragedy. My son passed away from cancer in 2009, and I picked up running shortly after that. Like most three-year-olds, Rick's son Armstrong was active. He loved to run. And that is where Rick still finds him. Every run that I go on, he is with me. It's like my therapy session. I go, and whether it's 20 minutes, or two and a half hours, he's with me every step of the way. But over the past six years, Rick and Armstrong have gotten some company. Let's go, Rick! If I'm out doing a name, I'm usually thinking about their story. See, Rick has become much more than just a runner. I'm known as the human etch sketch Traveling around the country, writing messages through running. Basically what I do is I use GPS when I go and run and spell out normally kids that fight cancer. Kids like his son, Kids like Finn Michael. Finn, uh, he's a six-year-old boy. He just finished kindergarten. Um, tons of energy, loves animals. Uh, he's learned to swim, loves riding his bike. That's where he is now. But just last year? They determined that he had acute myeloid leukemia. Finn going through four rounds of chemo. Now, 
in remission. A major step, but not the final hurdle. Finn won't be considered cured for five years. So we got a, kind of a long hike and um, a lot of anxiety around that too. That's when Rick came into the picture. Then I reached out to their family and they, were, they said they'd be honored for me to run this. Making the two plus mile run, this time for Finn. It was, it was really special to Finn because he's just learned to spell his name too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And he kind of writes, he kind of writes in that blocky yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, that's the way that, Rick, that Rick runs. Letters. A four-letter name that carries with it a much bigger message. I just hope that they come away with the fact that um, there are people out there that actually care about them. A message he spells out step by step, mile by mile, making sure everyone can read it. I think what Rick does is give people hope. A hope that gives you a reason to run, no matter how far you have left to go. Because at the end of the day, it's never been about how you start, but how you finish. Oh, that's so great. Doesn't even need editing, it's beautiful. No. Yeah. He's pulled triumph out of something so devastating and tragic, and, um, and there's a beauty to that, I think. That's it for us on Investigate TV Plus. I'm Tisha Powell. And I'm Lee Zurich. Thanks for watching. On the next Investigate TV Plus, facial recognition technology helps solve crimes, but it also comes with a controversial drawback. You got me back. I work, so I don't understand. I'm not even living out. Our investigation uncovers a learned trait in artificial technology that's leading to a disproportionate number of arrests involving people of color.